In addition to titles, the titles and generators sidebar has a whole category for generators. So you can click the triangle to hide titles and open up the generators category. If you don't see this, just use the shortcut option command one to display the titles and generators sidebar. And if you click on generators, it shows you all of them, but there are categories that we're going to go through here. You may see uh, on my machine, I have FX Factory Pro and the Star Titler. I have some third party um, generators installed. You may not see those on your system, but you should see the majority of these uh, generators listed. And titles and generators are very similar. That's why they're grouped together. Titles is specific because it's creating text. But generators might be creating things that are not actually text, so that's why they're separated out from the titles. There is a category here for 360 generators. So if you are working in a 360 project with 360 video, you might use one of these generators. Otherwise, our first category here is backgrounds. So these are actual generators you could use as backgrounds. For example, there's one here called blobs, which just shows those colors there, kind of blurred colors that you could use as a background. Now you're going to treat generators just like you would if it was a standard video clip. You can just click and drag this down onto your project to add that generator. So I'm going to add this over on the right side at the end of my scene here just so we can see that in action. And with the generator selected, if you go up to the generator inspector, you'll see the parameters we have and this actually lets us manipulate the color of these blobs. So in this case, we'll change um, all the colors here. And we'll make this a brighter color. And you can see how much more, uh, yeah, really, how different that is. It's super ugly, but <laughs> you can see how easy it is to manipulate these generators. So just because it looks one way here in the browser doesn't mean that that's what you're limited to. A lot of these generators have the ability to customize the generator after you've applied it to your project. So just like this one has a red curtain, you can actually go up and change the color of that curtain and it tints it a different way to give you a different look. And that's what this background category is all about. Really, these are designed to be used as backgrounds that you might put text or a title on top of one of these backgrounds. So if we add this one here, I could then go to my titles and get, say, a basic 3D title, and now I've put text on top of that background there and that generator. So that's our first category is backgrounds. We then have elements and elements is probably my favorite category of generators. You have uh, counting which actually lets you get a counter. So I can put this on the uh, timeline here and if I play it back it's just a counter counting up to some number. Uh, in this case it's counting up from 1 to 300 but maybe I want it to count up to 10. I could do that and if we play it back very slowly over the whole course of that generator, it's counting up to 10. I have different ways to change this. So if I'm actually trying to do a percentage or a scientific number, scientific is actually going to be interesting because we see all those additional numbers going up, even though we're only counting from 1 to 10. Uh, but you see a lot of parameters that you can go through and manipulate there. The next one is placeholder. And this one I find so useful because it allows you to storyboard a project. So as an example, let's say we don't have this shot yet of Simon, which is this over the shoulder shot, and we want to put in a placeholder. We could do that. So I'm going to drag the placeholder down. I'm going to put it above that clip just because we already have it, but I'll resize it. And then with the placeholder selected, I go into the publish parameters and I can change the type of shot this is which that one eh, is probably a close-up of Simon, and it's just going to be the one person, so I can put that one person there, and it's just demand, so I can do that. If I change it to woman, you can see the character changes. Uh, this background, well, we're, we're inside, so I'm going to hit interior. Uh, maybe it is night, because we know it's dark outside, and our background... We can go in here and say office, and it's going to be an office building, which I'm going to change this from a close-up to a long shot. You'll notice if I zoom back, it's showing that. But with a close-up, medium shot, we see it a little bit. With a close-up, it's just all the way in close. You don't really see that background that's there. And uh, cool, so that's my placeholder. So now I've created a placeholder 
that's roughly the layout of the shot that I actually want to do, which if I click on that clip and hit V to disable it, we'll see the one below it. And then this one, I mean, they're almost almost completely lined up there. So that's a great way to use a placeholder to uh, simply put in little clips on your timeline. And you could put a, you could put a title on this or even check off this box for use notes. You could enter in notes that you want to put there. And you know, if you're maybe you're gonna go and record a drone shot, you don't have it yet, you could put the placeholder in so that the rough cut that you're creating, is something something that someone will understand there. So definitely play around with those. Uh, it's surprisingly how simple this placeholder is, but how complex. They have a whole ton of backgrounds in here uh, that you can use. Uh, a whole bunch of people, as if there's a party happening. Uh, we'll go outside. You can see they, you know, there's really a lot of attention to detail in this goofy little placeholder generator. So in addition to that, we have some shapes. So you can use the shapes generator to uh, create a couple different types of shapes here, which is very common that you'll use these shapes as masks uh, and for other purposes. And then we have a time code generator. So we looked at in the effects video, applying a time code effect to a specific clip, but I find it's more frequently used that you're gonna wanna use this generator because you'll want a time code across your entire project if you're sending this to someone who's gonna be evaluating it. So. With just applying that uh, generator like I just did, notice we have the time code now going across the entire project. Very easy, not much to it. We can go in and change the font, the size, all kinds of different things uh, with this text to change what shows up. Maybe I don't need the word project next to it. So I'm able to adjust those things and get that time code generator on there. So that's another example of a generator that's built into Final Cut Pro 10. Um, Photo Montage, FX Factory Pro, these are all third-party ones, so I'm gonna skip those. But under Solids, you're gonna have a list of colors here. And if you remember in the keyframes, I used one of these color backgrounds as a way to keyframe it. And you can use this for all kinds of different uh, things. You know, it's not just a solid color generator. You can get creative with these. And what I mean by that is let's say that you are creating some text, like a lower third. And I'm gonna do this just creating the basic title here, and I'm gonna change the text here. Uh, who do we have here? We have Ralph. So let's put Ralph's name there, and I'm gonna change the position of it. Now I'm gonna go into my solids. I'm gonna grab custom and drag it below Ralph's name here. We'll change it so it's the same length there. And then, I'm gonna go on and add an effect to this custom background, going into my effects browser. I'm gonna get one of my masks onto it. If you remember, I showed you the draw mask. Let's use that one. And I'm gonna click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. I'm clicking and dragging so that I get the Bezier handles to create a curved uh, effect here. And then I'll click on the end here to get that back at the end. So now I've essentially cropped in on this solid black background of a color to create this background to Ralph's name. I could change the color if I wanted to. And now I have a nice little background here and I can even select this and go into blur effects. Let's use the Gaussian blur, for example, blur that so it's got a nice blurred outline. Looking at my video effects, I'll change the amount of it. Try that. And boom, there we go. We've created a little goofy little title there. I don't know why you'd ever want to use this specific formatting and placement, but you can see how even though all you have is a color as a solid generator, you can use effects to manipulate that colored background and use it to your benefit. So pretty nice. Uh, while we're here, just I'm gonna select this one. Another way that the effect order matters Notice if I blur the background first and then apply the mask, it doesn't do anything. So this is where that effect order is, is very important to uh, keep intact there. Uh, cool, so that is kind of a look at the generators. You might have textures as well. These are some other background types. Um, similar thing, we got metal here, right? Don't hesitate, add this one down there and look at the generators inspector because there's a whole bunch of different types of this metal generator that you can use. You can very easily change the color that's gonna be used for that generator. 
which doesn't affect all of them, but it'll affect some of these uh, that are used. And pretty cool how all this stuff is just built right into Final Cut. You don't need to go out to a uh, another application or anything like that. You can use a lot of this stuff that's built in to Final Cut Pro using the titles and generators sidebar to access all of those generators.